So in this video, we're going to explore how we're going to find the shortest distance between these two skew lines. So we've got L1 and L2 here. They're not parallel. They've got different direction vectors. And one's not a multiple of the other, so they're definitely skew lines. So we need to figure out some way um, of how we're actually going to find the shortest distance between them. So to help us out, let's draw a diagram. OK, so let's just start off by thinking, OK, well, if I've got two skew lines, then generally we would draw them like this, right? And we can uh, agree that the shortest distance between them will be such that we could find this line that is perpendicular to both. OK, so that seems fair enough. Now, unfortunately, this is probably not the best way to kind of visualise these two skew lines. Um, it would be better if we instead looked at them in such a way that they were side on. So rather than looking them like that, imagine now that you can look at them so that you can see them side on. So here's uh, L1 and L2, say, OK? Now, just be aware, you know, you could have L2s kind of like pointing in that direction and L1 is pointing in that direction. But because of the perspective of what you're looking at, it looks like they are two flat planes that you are looking at side on. So that's going to be the key. We're going to consider those two lines rather than askew lines as two planes, two parallel planes. OK. Now, once we've done that, we can go, OK, well, if, say, the origin was here, then what I could do is I could work out how far away this plane is from the origin. And then I could work out how far this plane is from the origin and subtract one from the other. And whatever I did there, I'd have to make sure I'm finding uh, the modulus to make sure I'm looking at a distance, right? So, I mean, that, that method uh, should work fine. It'd be that distance, take away that distance. And if the origin was somewhere between the two planes, so if the origin was here, then if I worked out that distance and I worked out that distance, because one is in the negative direction, then what I do, once I do that, take away that, it would be taking away a negative, and so I get a positive value, and so I will get the distance that I require. Okay, So it doesn't matter where the origin appears, whether it's between um, or to one side of these two, that's perfectly fine. So how am I going to work out... Uh, this direction, because I'm going to need that direction there. So what I'm going to need is a direction to look in, and that will be using the vector product. So uh, I need a direction so that I've got an idea of um, a line that is perpendicular to both of these two direction vectors, okay, in order to make sure that they are at right angles. So that, if I find the vector product between those two, that will give me the direction I need. OK, so let's start off with that. So I'm going to work out the cross product between the two direction vectors. OK, so that's going to be the determinant of this matrix. Okay, right, let's see what we've got. Um, so to start off with, we've got uh, 6i, and then we're going to have, so minus, uh, minus 1 times 3, take away 1 times 2, so that's going to give us uh, 5, so plus 5j. And then for k, we've got minus 1 times 0, take away 2, so take away 2k. Right, so that means that is a vector that is perpendicular to both of them. So what I want to think about is the line that is going through the origin that is going to be perpendicular to both. Okay, So the line 
through the origin that I want to consider, okay, would be 6k, 5k minus 2k, because when k is 0, then it's at the origin, and so I know that this the line will have this form. So I can write that as r, r equals, rather, r equals that there, 6k, 5k minus 2k. That would be a line going through the origin uh, that will intersect L1 and L2 at right angles. Right, so that's what I want. Okay, so I need to consider these lines as planes rather than as lines. Okay, so I'm going to think about pi 1, which will be plane 1 for line 1. Okay, now I know that this vector is perpendicular to it, so this is the normal vector to the plane. So I know that the equation of it must be 6x plus 5y minus 2z equals, and I can work out what it's equal to by substituting uh, a point on the line that I know is there. So I know that this point is on the line, so it has to be on the plane. So 1, 0, 1 substituted into this will give me 6 plus 0 take away 2. And so 6 take away 2 is 4. So this is plane number 1. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing for plane 2. So plane 2 will have exactly the same normal vector. So it will be 6x plus 5y minus 2z. And I need to substitute in this position vector 0, 3, 5 into that. So I'd get 0 plus 15 take away 10. So that's equal to 5. So these are my two planes. So I can now look at where does this line intersect plane 1 and where does this line intersect plane 2. So the line intersects plane 1. Okay. So I'm going to substitute, because remember R equals, that's X, Y, Z equals these. So I can put X, Y, Z into the plane and that will allow me to find K. And that will find me where they intersect. Right, so that is going to be uh, 6 lots of 6K, so 36K. 5 lots of 5K is 25K. And minus 2, lots of minus 2k, is plus 4k, and that's going to be equal to 4. Okay, so this is going to find me k in this case. So we've got 36 plus 25 plus 4 is 65, so k must be 4 over 65. Okay, right, so we've got that. So that means I can work out where the line is intersecting plane 1, or L1 in this case. So that point there. So let's call this point A, shall we? That could be point A. So A has the coordinates. Um, so I can just put k equals 4 over 65 into this, and that will give me the position vector for A. Um, so let's just do it as... Uh, let's just do it as 4 lots of 6. So 6 lots of 4 is 24. So 24 over 65... Then we've got 5 lots of 4, so 20 over 65. And then minus 2 lots of 4, so minus 8 over 65. OK, so that's the coordinates of A. Right, now we're going to do the same thing to work out this point here. So let's call that point B, shall we? So the line intersects pi 2. Um, so we're going to pop that now into pi 2, but that's just going to be the same, 36k plus 25k plus 4k, uh, but this time equal to 5. So k in this case will be 5 divided by 65, so 1 over 13. So b will have coordinates uh, 6 over 13, 5 over 13, and minus 2 over 13. So 5 over 13 and minus 2 over 13. So that's the coordinates of B.
Right, brilliant. So that means that I can look at the distance between those two. So um, what I need, now it doesn't matter which way around I do this, I could do OA take away OB or OB take away OA. I guess in the way that I've drawn this, you might be thinking, well, it makes more sense to do it this way around, so that's fine. OB take away OA, and we want the length of that. And this should give me the distance I need. Okay, so uh, OB take away OA. So 6 over 13 take away 24 over 65. So 6 over 65 I. Then we've got 5 over 13 take away 20 over 65. So that's 1 over 13 J. And then we've got minus 2 over 13 take away minus 8 over 65. So that's getting me minus 2 over 65k. OK. Right, so I need the length of that vector. So it's the square root of... Uh, so we're going to have 6 over 65 squared plus 1 over 13 squared plus uh, minus 2 over 65 squared. So that's the square root of 1 over 65 So, root 65 over 65, which is equal to 0.124 to three significant figures. Right, so process then, and this is what we're going to want to generalise in the next video, is thinking about, OK, so we're going to turn the two lines into planes and we're going to work out the normal vector by finding the cross product of the two direction vectors. And then, once I've got that, I can turn that into a line, which I can then look at where that line intersects the two planes to work out the two coordinates, subtract one from the other, and mod it so I can get the length. Okay? So that's going to be my process uh, to see if we can get a generalised formula for this setup.